Okay. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We are so excited for our third hour of the day, the seven last words. And we, uh, again, are so glad to have with us um, the, uh, the co-pastor. You saw a senior pastor just, just an hour ago, Pastor Ed. We are so glad to have the co-pastor of the Redeemed Harvest Church, uh, Sister Jennifer Moffat, we are elated to have her with us today. God bless you, sis, for joining us, coming and hanging out with us uh, to do our virtual seven last prayers again. Uh, this is a mighty woman of God who has a word directly from God, and we are excited, y'all. I'm telling you, I'm filled up already. There's two in, and I have been waiting for this one because this woman of God can go, y'all. I can tell you she is really a truly a woman of God who uh, knows the word and can parse the word and can deliver the word with excellence. And so we are so uh, excited to have Sister Jennifer with us today. Um, we have known her and her husband for ages. Um, she is a, just an extremely close friend of ours. And um, this is the first opportunity we've had, actually had for her to come and minister with us. And y'all can look for her to be around before I tell you what, because I just, I, I love her word and I love what she has to say. And so I'm um, excited that she was able to come and, and hang out with us today. Again, uh, Believer's Life, uh, Redeemed Harvest, and everybody else who's, uh, who's watching, thank you. Thank you for joining us today for our virtual seven last words. I am going to turn it over to Sister Jen. So Jen, introduce yourself and then, uh, and then just get right into it. Amen. Amen. Oh my God. Glory to God. I am so grateful. I am so humbled uh, first of what God is doing in my life. What he has done with me is truly a testament of how great God is. Let me tell you, I was a work. <laughs> um, very glad to be here. Very honored to be in the presence of such a great man. Um, more humbled to have followed the great pastor my husband is, senior pastor in Moffitt. That, that's a real cool thing. Uh, so I know I have to have my stuff together to follow Pastor Ed. But Pastor Mizan, you and Lady Cross White are very, very dear to us. And I tell you, you are a man of God who does not play. Uh, I'm always impressed with your delivery. I still think about some of your, you know, messages I've heard in the past. The born uh, message that you did still resonates in my mind. So to have you to welcome me is indeed an honor. Thank you, thank you. And so I'm gonna go right into the assignment at hand. John 19 verses 26 through 27, and it reads, and when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. I was reading from the NIV. At this point, this is such a pivotal moment during the crucifixion of Jesus. The crucifixion is ended. They have beaten him all night long. Um, he opens up his seven last words with forgiveness. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And then he goes into a promise and he promises the thief that he would be with him in paradise. And here he's going to fulfill something. This is such a great moment. And, and I just want to, you know, in our lives, in our lives, we go through transition. Everything is a process. If you want to, and I, and I spoke on this last night um, as I filled in at the Bible study. If you want to feel, if you want to get to a resurrection, everybody wants to get to a resurrection, a resurrection in in your, your spirit, a resurrection in your finances, a resurrection emotionally in your relationships. We're all looking for some great resurrection and some great manifestation. And last time I talked about the face-to-face -face Friday because you got to go through Friday to get to Sunday. And right now it is Friday. And so he is, he is gone, here he is. And while he is in agony, they have beaten him, they have demoralized him, they have made fun of him. So in every aspect of his being, he is enduring a suffering. 
This is a man who was without sin and now he is bearing every sin all at the same time simultaneously while hanging from a cross with nails in his hands, nails in his feet, between two thieves. What an amazing place to be. And still at this moment, he looks out and he sees his mother. All the people that we see up until this point that Jesus has spoken a word to, the multitude, they're not there. The, people, the families of the people he healed, the little girl who he rose from the dead, the man they lowered down from the roof, they're not there. The people that he healed from leprosy that ran out, they're not there. Where is all the people that he helped? <laughs> and to add insult to injury before they race him to the cross, the soldiers cast lots for his clothes. <laughs> so he's naked. He's naked and here he is, and it says, when he saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved, his mother who brought him into the world, his mother who stood by him. There's no mention of Jesus. Scholars believe that at this time, Jesus, uh, not Jesus, I'm sorry, Joseph, that he's probably already dead. After the birth of Jesus, it is understood that Joseph and Mary had at least four other children, but they're not there. Many times when you are anointed as Jesus is, and those of us who are anointed, who walk this walk will understand, your family don't always believe in you the way other people do. Because here he has a disciple whom he loved that is not blood related to him and his mother. But if you have a mother, you have a mother today, if your mother's still around, I want to encourage some people, right? You know, just take a moment to say, you know, when all else fails, when everyone else fails, your mother will, will be there. And here she is. Here is Mary. And she's not just there. She's not just there in physical. She's there in spirit. As Jesus was being crucified, she felt everything that her son felt. As she looked upon him, she could not help him. She could not wipe his face. He's there on the cross. She couldn't do anything to ease his pain. And she herself is in great pain. She had to have fought back to when they brought Jesus to be circumcised when he was eight days old. And the prophet that was there in the synagogue spoke to her and told her a sword would pierce her heart. And she couldn't imagine what he meant. I'm sure at this time, those words resonate in her mind because while a, a sword pierced his side, a sword pierced her heart as she is looking at her son. But Jesus, on the cross in all his agony, he still remains true to his assignment from God. He still remains true to his responsibilities as a man. So at this point, he is truly dwelling between two spiritual existences. As a Jewish boy, it is understood by custom. It is honorable. You are to take care of your mother if your father is in absence. So while he is fulfilling what God has assigned him to do, he still does not negate to fulfill his responsibilities in his culture. And I think that is so paramount right there because there are so many pastors uh, on right here on Good Friday. I want to speak to this. It is wonderful to have a great ministry. If you're a missionary, it's wonderful to travel the world. But that assignment does not over, does not take over and negate the assignment that God gives you to your family. And so Jesus in his balance right here, we're gonna see that he is still, while he is fulfilling the assignment to the father, he's still gonna fulfill his obligation to his earthly mother. In the commandments it says, honor thy father and mother, and mother that the day, your days on this earth shall be long. And so what he does with that, he, he's thinking of his obligation as he sees his mother there standing with the disciple whom he loved. And he speaks to her. And he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, he says, here is your mother. Now, this is interesting. Here he is, and he speaks to his mother, woman. I can think of another time when Jesus spoke to his mother and he called her woman. In doing so, he is respecting her. He is separating his mother from his ministry. 
he doesn't call her mom because as mom, you know, as being mom, mother, that's his uh, connection with her as a mother. But right now he is talking to her as her pastor. He does that at the beginning of his ministry. If we all look back when there was the wedding and she came to him and told him to turn the water to wine and he told her, woman, it is not yet my time. So he again was separating her and pastoring her and, and kind of keeping things in perspective. That's the beginning of his ministry. And here we see as he is dying, this is the end of his ministry. Notice his mother is there, what? At the beginning of his ministry and by his side. And here she is at the end of his ministry. And he tells a woman, here is your son. That means right now, all the compassion and love you have for me, mom, because I'm going on to fulfill the prophecy that's on my life, to fulfill what God has assigned me to do. Right now, mother, I want you to understand, I want you to take all your compassion and place it on John. And then he says to John, the disciple whom he loved, here is your mother. What he did at that time, it is when you understand your true assignment from God, and you understand who you are as a woman or a man, not just not in not only in God, but in responsibility. When you become grown, so to speak, you walk differently. And here Jesus is a full grown man, and he is now understanding that he will not be here to do the earthly things for his mother, but he still has enough compassion for her at this point where he is dying. He is passing that torch to John. Now, of all the other disciples, it is so interesting. John is the only disciple who lived to fulfill his life. He died of natural causes, whereas the other disciples died as martyrs in one circumstance or the other. So when he, in choosing a disciple to be there, to care for his mother and carry out his responsibilities with his mother, he chose John because he knew John would be there and live past her and, and be there to do the things he could not do. He told them from this day on, it says from this day on, the disciple took her into his home. He made her family. No matter what we go through in this life, in this ministry. We have to keep balance. In, in, and we have to keep a perspective in what God has called us to do. We have to be responsible pastors, pastors who move on and have left their churches, their ministries, their God-given ministries, the pastors whom you knew could not carry the mantle, could not carry the torch could not take care of the mothers in the church, couldn't speak to the marriages in the church. Jesus gives us a great example that I'm sure in this moment, it would have been all about me, how I'm trying to breathe. He could hardly breathe at this point. But he still had enough life in him to fulfill everything that God had given him to keep it in balance. He still had a love for his mother. There is um, something to be said for a son who loves his mother. And there's something to be said for a mother who raises a son who is so responsible. Jesus in his last uh, hours, in his last words um, of his, you know, he's here in his last seven words, he directed uh, a protection and a consideration for his mother. And that is what God gave me um, in this hour to share with the people of God on this, uh, on this good Friday evening. Amen, that's a good message. That's a good word, Jen, that's a good word. We're so thankful, there's something to think about. This just eat on that a little bit. Just, just suck with that and and realize that that you got to be willing to give it, and you also have to be willing to receive. You got to be willing to receive the yeah. love that God has for you. So, sister, we are so thankful that you came and hung out with us. We are thankful for you, and we appreciate you as always. You look beautiful, and we uh, will be hooking up with you and Ed.
uh, at a later time and just uh, just chopping it up. And so again, thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you, we love you, we love you. I pray that each and every one of you that has listened to this word have been blessed and that you will take it and that you will apply it to your life. And again, we'll see you in about 45, 50 minutes for the fourth word of the hour. God bless you. God keep you. God let this fish shine upon you. Again, Sister Jen, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. God bless you, guys.